Um, so my name is Igor. I'm an engineer here at Poundflex. Um, I'm also the sales rep for the Midwest region. Um, before I start, I, ju I just want to thank you guys for being here. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, but I guess you guys already know that it can be any type of material, uh, metal, rubber, or fabric, and it's used to accommodate movement in a piping system. Um, you know, and that movement can be caused by vibration or thermal growth or any number of things. Um, but usually when you have that movement, you need to find a way to accommodate the stress uh, from the rigid piping section. And one of the tools is a, a metal expansion joint. Um, the biggest benefit of it is the axial movement. Uh, braided, braided metal hose cannot be compressed or extended uh, because of the braid. So I, I put space reduction over metal hose here because uh, a metal hose you can use to accommodate axial movement if you put it in a loop like this. Um, so this, if this end is fixed, this end can move left, right and accommodate the axial movement this way. Um, but an expansion joint can be put in in line uh, with the pipe and accommodate the movement a lot uh, in a more straightforward way. So you don't have this big U shape uh, that you have to worry about. Um, there's also a big cost savings uh, when it comes to uh, ex especially exotic materials. Um, so if you guys were to come to us for like I don't know, say six inch, uh, ha like some exotic Hasloy or Inconel uh, expansion joint or hose, um, we probably wouldn't want to run it on the hose machines because for that you need a very large strip of material, um, which makes us run the full mill length, which you know turns the cost over to you because you have to buy the full mill length. Um, but expansion joints can be made from uh, discrete 48 by 120 sheets of metal. Uh, so there's cost savings when you only need a certain, like a small length of uh, bellows. Um, and then very, when very large diameters are involved, uh, we only have braid up to 24 inches. So beyond that, you can only, you can't have a braided metal hose without braid. So above 24 inches, you're really kind of limited to using an expansion joint. Uh, so this is the bellows. Uh, as you guys know, it's what does the magic in an expansion joint. Uh, it's just a cylindrical piece of metal that gets punched out to have convolutions. It looks like an unbraided metal hose because it is an unbraided metal hose. Uh, just the corrugations are uh, designed based on a code and then manufactured also based on that code and all the corrugations are um, we, we make sure that all the corrugations are symmetric and uh, are up to date to that code whereas a metal hose every corrugation isn't as uniform so you, you have you know differences and there's no code that defines uh, that guarantees the pressure capacity or um, or the movement capabilities. So really that designing it based on the code is what makes them like what moves it from an unbraided hose to an expansion joint. Um, the types of bellows, the bellows can be made from a single ply to a multi ply. Uh, we have the capability to make up the five ply. Um, and then we have uh, a thickness maximum. So for five ply, we can only do uh, 012 for each ply, so a total thickness of 060. Uh, it's just because our tooling is strong enough to punch 060. Um, but we can make two, three, four, five, um, or single ply expansion joints. The biggest advantage of the multi ply is that every every layer can move independent of each other. Um, so you have the overall thickness, which can accommodate large pressure, um, but then having the different or individual thin plies allows it to move a lot free, like a lot more easier. Um, so if there's high movement or vibration, that, that would be application where you want to use a multiply bellows. Um, so you have your bellows and then you can weld on fittings or flanges or whatever you want, um, but that makes it into an expansion joint. 
um, the most basic type of expansion joint is the single expansion joint or the um, axial expansion joint, just one bellows with two ends on it. Um, it's good for axial movement, but and it can accommodate some lateral movement, but it's kind of a jack of all trades. Um, it's not the most axial movement, it's not the most lateral movement, you can just do everything. Uh, so unless the application is specialized, you can most of the time you can get away with this. Um, when I say axial movement, I mean the bellows compressing or extending um, in line to the piping system. Um, and that this expansion joint is good for this. The lateral, it can also do, but not as much. If you have significant lateral movements, you have to move up to, or as the possible solution is using a universal expansion joint, which is two metal bellows that are connected on a center spool. Um, and just the angles of, and the length of these two bellows being able to both bend uh, allows for much greater lateral offsets. Um, than just the single bellows. Um, another uh, another movement a bellows can accommodate is angular rotation, uh, which is kind of a combination of expansion and lateral. Um, but it's not going to bend 45 degrees, but 10, 15 degrees, uh, it should have a good cycle life. Now, what a bellows can't do is accommodate torsion. Uh, Panflex nor Enchma recommend it and um, the, the torsion just puts a lot of shear stress on the material so it, uh, the bellows would fail very quickly in the application. Um, usually torsion is caused when you have two fixed flanges um, and they're to the, the pipe fitters torque them into place. If there's two fixed flanges that are misaligned um, they can get torqued into place and then uh, it will just quickly fail from there. Um, one way to correct that is using a floating flange on one end, um, just like in a metal hose. You have the same problem using metal hose. Um, but if the piping system has torsional issues, they really need to be solved before an expansion joint can be introduced. An expansion joint will not solve uh, torsional issues. Um, so one of the specialized expansion joints that we have done recently is a externally pressurized joint. Um, the code books uh, for expansion joints have a limit on how long the bellows can be, um, but there's also a practical limit on how long you can make it before um, the bellows starts to squirm. So an externally pressurized expansion joint gets around this by uh, putting the media on the outside of the bellows, and then there's there's ambient air here on the inside. Um, so now the media is, or the pressure is kind of crushing um, the bellows instead of you know trying to go outwards. So the biggest advantage of that is you don't have to worry about squirm anymore, and the bellows can be designed to be much longer practically um, than just a regular single bellows. Uh, you would use this uh, for very large axial movements. So longer lengths or longer number of convolutions allow for uh, much better movement. So having this more, having a longer than usual bellow section allows for two, three inches of compression extension. Um, and we have made some of these very recently. So the disadvantages of expansion joints, which you may or may not know, is the cost. Usually they're much more expensive than uh, a metal hose alternative. Um, and they also require proper piping design to accommodate um, pressure thrust, and they require guides, which just keep adding to the cost. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with pressure thrust, uh, but the easiest way for me to describe it is, um, if you imagine a, a bendy straw, like the picture I have, and you cap one end. Well, well, this this bendy straw has a little corrugated section in the middle, which is pretty much just an expansion joint. So if you cap one end and then you blow into the other, um, you can imagine that that middle section will want to grow back into a straight tube. Um, so you really need um, your pipe anchors to be able to withstand that and be able to hold the expansion joint from extending in that way. Um, and that's why uh, 
you really need proper piping design to accommodate for the additional force there, um, just leading to more cost. And that's that's the reason why you can't just uh, go in and replace a metal hose with an expansion joint. It's, it's because um, the piping system needs to be designed for the forces that the expansion joint introduces. Um, some common uh, accessories that we provide, um, limit rods, tie rods, shrouds, liners, uh, among others. Uh, tie rods, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, they're, they're used to restrain the bellows from extending and then they take up all that pressure thrust that I just mentioned. Um, but you might ask why if these rods can take up the pressure thrust and that was one of the big disadvantages in the expansion joint, why not just use them? Well, they also take away the uh, axial movement. So the tie rods, you can imagine, are kind of like a braid with only three strands, uh, but they, sit, they serve the same function. They, they stop the, the bellows from being able to ex expand. Uh, so if you do use them, you don't have to change your anchors, but now your bellows doesn't accommodate axial movement, um, only lateral deflection. Uh, limit rods, on the other hand, are kind of similar, but they allow the expansion joint to operate normally uh, in, in normal operation. Um, only when, if the ankles, anchors were to fail, um, then the limit rods get engaged and then they take up the pressure thrust. But in normal operation, they don't take up any pressure thrust and uh, you still need robust anchors in your system. Um, control rods are used to um, distribute the movement between two bellows, uh, mostly in a universal expansion joint. Um, they don't carry the pressure thrust uh, in normal operation or if the anchors were to fail. Um, so just the, getting the nomenclature straight. Um, shrouds, covers, guards uh, used for protection against external abrasion or ex external uh, conditions. Um, they can come in a variety of designs. I've made them, you know, clamshell, the singular, singular tube. It, it's pretty much uh, the, the basic concept is it's, it's a cylindrical piece of pipe or cylindrical sheet of metal that protects the outside of the expansion drain. Um, now take that same cylindrical shape and put it inside and now you have a liner. Uh, and that's any de uh, that's a device installed in the bellows uh, to minimize the effects of um, mostly flow velocity, uh, but also abrasion. If there's um, some kind of particle going through some you know, fine powder or rocks or uh, anything with substance, uh, they can damage the corrugations, um, and it also prevents the particles from settling in between uh, the convolutions. Uh, now, in a metal hose, you start to consider a liner, uh, you know, when the flow is 75 feet per second to 150 feet per second, um, depending on the media. In an expansion drawer, you really want to start considering a liner at 10 feet per second, 15. Uh, the, you really want to protect the corrugations from the flow-induced fatigue. And again, there's different options for the liner. It can be a weld-in or uh, top hat design, which is just is removable and replaceable. If you can imagine uh, on a mac micro scale, uh, ev flow is going to cause every one of those corrugations to vibrate a little bit. And if the flow is too much, then that vibration can start to cause fatigue issues. So you you put the liner so far away from the, or you put it, you weld it in away from the corrugations so that the corrugations can move towards it and never interfere. Uh, so if the expansion was rated for an inch of lateral movement, I would put the liner one inch down from the corrugations. Um, uh, there's a few different design codes uh, that an expansion joint can be manufactured to. The most common is definitely the EDGMA. Uh, and we recently got the most recent up to date 10th edition. Um, so we can design based on that. Uh, and then there's also 
more niche uh, design codes such as B313 or B311, which are you know bigger piping codes, but they also have an expansion joint section. Um, they all piggyback off the Edgemar um, design code, but they have additional uh, requirements uh, that we can that we're able to meet. So if you, if you were to get an expansion joint um, to that needs to be in accordance to say ASME B313, we have made those before. Um, so just because it doesn't, you know, just because it's not Edgemar doesn't mean uh, we can't do it. Some more common design codes, these, these are uh, special, are, these are foreign ones. Uh, the European PD is a little bit tougher. We wouldn't get the PD just for one expansion joint. It's more of a uh, factory-wide certification that has to be ongoing. So if, if we couldn't quote just one expansion joint with a PED qualification, it would have to be, uh, you know, annual usage of so and so, and then I would, I would quote that. And then one that you may be more familiar with is CRNs, which is for Canadian customers. Uh, it's not as tough as the PD, but it still takes time and money, uh, but that one is more doable. Um, so what information uh, does Penflix need uh, when we're quoting expansion joints? Well, we just need uh, the diameter, the overall length, and the ends at a very bare minimum. Uh, but any information that you provide beyond that can help us design or recommend an expansion joint for the application. One step above the bare minimum would be the, the pressure and the temperature, and then another step would be the movement. Anything beyond that is, is nice to know, but uh, I would definitely focus on getting those, the, the pressure, temperature, and the movement uh, to start. So what happens when I get this information? Uh, this is the calculator that I look at uh, when I do the quotes. This is based on, well, you can have different design bases, but this one is uh, this one shown is the, the AJMA, AJMA calculations. Um, the pressure, temperature, movements inputs are put in here, and then I design a uh, corrugation geometry uh, with different material alloys and uh, based on our tooling, and that outputs the allowable stress values uh, and the the movement capabilities of the expansion joint. Uh, one thing to notice here is that the this particular design would be in accordance to Edgemon, but the ASME 8, uh, the squirm calculation is actually a little low. So these different codes, this expansion will be perfectly fine for an Edgemon uh, or most applications, but if it was an ASME 8 uh, specified, then it wouldn't be okay. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. The uh, the design code can be important uh, when designing these. And then once I you know figure out a geometry that works or something that that's best for the application, I um, put together the numbers. I send uh, the price quote, but I also send the calculations, which show uh, the geometry of the bellows. Uh, the movements and the pressure that I use uh, to design it. And then it gives you the outputs of expected cycle life uh, and uh, the calculations for your customer if they're interested. If you were to place an order, uh, then I would make a drawing that shows all that information that I mentioned before, the, the pressure, temperature, and the movements, um, but also a to scale drawing of the bellows and flanges. Uh, so your customer can kind of see the product before uh, you make it, because um, that could be important. Uh, so this is, I guess, the more information, the more important information that you were hoping to get. Uh, what can Penflex do? Uh, one of the most important criteria when designing an expansion is selecting the right material, uh, especially when corrosion comes into play. Um, we stock 321, 304, and 316 stainless steel. Um, the other two uh, would be more made to order. And then sometimes we have stock of Inconel 625 and Hassel C276. 
Um, but honestly, everything beyond stainless, I would have to, it's not stocked, but we can source it. So uh, material isn't really an issue. It's just, I guess, it's the, the lead time. But if, if you need an ink canal expansion joint in a hot rush, like something's gone terribly wrong. So uh, we, we can make expansion joints out of any material, pretty much. Uh, what end fittings are available? Uh, just regular flanges, plate flanges, uh, pipe ends, anything you can imagine. Uh, shouldn't be an issue. And then what size? Uh, we have the ability to manufacture two and a half inch ID to 40 inch ID, which is two inch pipe size to 40 inch pipe size. Um, but we're constantly acquiring new tooling. Uh, so if you need 42 inch and you ask in a month from now, we might have it. And then we're OK with fabricating up to wherever we, we can source 120 inch bellows um, that we can weld for you if you don't want to, you know, if you get a quote for the bellows at Twenty thousand dollars, and you don't want to risk welding it together. We can we can weld it for you. Uh, the testing that we do. <clears throat> so all of our bellows, when we form it into a cylinder, all that that seam weld uh, gets dye penetrant <clears throat> dye penetrant tested uh, before we form it, and that's just to uh, not waste time. If there's defects in that seam weld and we punch it out, it's gonna break, so we would rather test it before punching it than punch it and have it fail. Um, but die pen's also available after forming and after the attachment welds are made. Uh, radiographic is another common, common one, if before and after. Um, hydro testing is a little bit more. Hydro testing is not as common as it is in metal hose. Um, just because it's a lot more difficult to do for an expansion drain. There's a lot more cost, but it can be done. And then the soap and bubble leak test is, is the common way to pressure test and leak test an expansion drain. And then we have, just like metal hose, we have uh, PMI capabilities for the exotic alloys. Um, <clears throat> Expansion joints can fail in a couple different ways, but mostly it's just inappropriate design, uh, either material or um, you know maybe the material is too thick for the vibration, or you know it should have been a multiply design. Uh, but we can definitely help with that. There's also kind of more niche situations such as a steam hammer. Uh, that can cause failure. We can't do much about that, but we can definitely recommend something and figure out the problem. Um, one of one of the services Penflex offers is a failure analysis, and that's free of charge. If your customer has an expansion route that just keeps failing, um, you can send it in to us. We'll take a look and then we'll write up a report um, saying, you know, we think it failed so because of this, and um, here are the reasons or here are the ways that we can correct it. Uh, we also offer rebuilds or recreations of expansion joints that are made by manufacturers that are no longer in business. Um, different manufacturers have different tooling, so it's usually not possible to give an exact match or an exact exact duplicate. Um, but we can always propose an equivalent design, um, especially if your customer can't, you know, find the original manufacturer. Um, so that was it. Uh, any questions?